The new prospect, welcome to RTB 2021 for March 24th, 2021. I got some great texts for us today, so I hope you're ready to dive right in. Uh, we have Exodus 35, John 14, then Proverbs 11, and Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, why don't we start with Exodus today? So we're starting a new section in Exodus, uh, and it's going to seem really familiar to you because uh, we have here, uh, remember this is right after all the golden calf stuff. Uh, we're starting back with the tabernacle and uh, you have to wonder you know why was the instructions for the tabernacle separated out from the uh, actual building of the tabernacle in chapters 35 35 through 40 and i think part of it is that uh is god showing god's grace ultimately to still live with his people despite their rebellion that there's that is illustrated in chapters 32 through 34 shows something of that character that we just saw uh yesterday as God revealed himself to be gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and truth. Well, the major illustration of that is that God is still agreeing to be with his people uh, here in the last part of the book of Exodus. This is going to be pretty tedious for the, these next few days to get through, but I know you can do it. But there's a reason why it's going to uh, seem to be really familiar to you. And by the way, in chapter 35, we're, it's going to be talking about the, the bringing of the materials for the, the tabernacle. And it's pretty much repetitive of, of the uh, details of the materials that were needed in, the, in chapters uh, 25 through 29. Or I'm sorry, 25 through 31. Um, and there's a reason uh, for that. And by repeating it, the, the author, Moses, is showing how step by step, detail by detail they're keeping the exact instructions of god uh, and it's in a way illustrating what um what was expected of god's covenant people as god instructed so they were to do uh it's a what is called a command execution formula in scripture where god commands it the people do it and by using the same words in the command and the execution it shows that god's people are in fact doing this we'll see this in the book of joshua as well uh, when we get there uh, and of course, this text begins with um, Moses reminding the people of the Sabbath uh, that they are, you know, they're not still in Egypt. They they do not have to work on the on the Sabbath. They are uh, they're to be honoring their Creator uh, as King and as Sovereign uh, by pausing from their labor and putting their trust in Him, uh, even in the construction of the tabernacle. Okay, uh, we'll we'll say more about about that in the coming days. Uh, that brings us to Proverbs chapter 11, and we have some more of those uh, short aphoristic statements we talked about yesterday. Let me give you another uh, clue for understanding these uh, Proverbs uh, as you read through them. One of the things you'll notice probably is that it really doesn't seem to have any rhyme or reason in terms of subject matter. They seem to go from one thing to the next. Um, and, and this is odd because in Hebrew, in Hebrew literature, Hebrew poetry, uh, even Hebrew narrative, the writers of the Old Testament love structure. Uh, they love patterns and organizations and repetitions and these types of things. And when you don't find them, uh, you have to ask yourself, why? Why, why aren't they, there these patterns and, or, and structures that, that are noticeable to us? And if there isn't a pattern or structure, I think it's usually purposeful. In this case, I think it is purposeful to show completeness uh, by showing, uh, you know, at one point, maybe it might be dealing with, um, you know, for instance, in verse 11, talking about just weights and balances. That's talking about economics, right? And how do you live ethically in this world? Um, and then verse two, it talks about your attitude, pride and humility. Uh, verse four talks about how do you handle wealth. Uh, verse, uh, let's see, skipping down to verse, uh, verse nine, talking about, um, you know, the, your speech. Uh, so it's skipping from one subject to the next. And scholars have spent a lot of time trying to find a, a, an order or structure, but I think there's a purposeful disorder. And the, here's the purpose of that disorder, to show by, by, listing it in this way to show that life comes at us in a very disordered way and yet the completeness of our life whether it's our work life our family life our job life uh our you know our what we do in as a covenant body of christ in our worship uh what we do with our speech what we do with uh, even things like sexuality all these things are 
are should be governed by wisdom. Wisdom applies to all of life, in other words. Uh, it is how we practically live out our lives in covenant with God. Uh, so as you read through this, understand that this is this is teaching us that there's no compartmentalization when it comes to wisdom. We just apply wisdom when we're at church or we apply wisdom when we're fellowshipping with fellow believers. No, you apply wisdom to all that you do. And that wisdom ultimately, as we've discussed, is grounded in a knowledge of who God is and a fear of who God is. Uh, and those two things go together. So um, we'll, again, we'll make some more comments on that as we go through uh, the next few weeks as well. Uh, that brings us to John chapter 14, and uh, this is one of the more famous teachings of Jesus as he is in the upper room, uh, comforting his disciples in two ways. Uh, he's, first of all, talk, talking about how he's going to go and prepare a place for them, uh, and this is, uh, this is Jesus' way of, of comforting his disciples, saying that they have a place, right, uh, that is awaiting for them, and that includes us as well. Uh, and the way to that place, famously in John 14, 6, is another one of those I am statements. I think we've talked about those where Jesus is identifying himself with Yahweh in the Old Testament, who, had, who uh, identifies himself in Exodus chapter 3 and Exodus 6 as the I am. Uh, who's, Israel to, who's Moses to tell Israel uh, that God is? Tell them God says that I am, I am, that I am. Uh, that's his name, right? Uh, and here Jesus identifies himself with, as he often does in the book of John, with Yahweh. Uh, but he is the way, the truth, and the life. This is probably the most uh, often quoted and most clearest, I think, the clearest expression of Jesus' divinity. Uh, well, his exclusive divinity, let's put it that way. Uh, the exclusivity of Christ in the entirety of the Bible. There is one way uh, to God. And that is only through Christ. At the end of this chapter, uh, Jesus comforts his disciples in another way uh, by uh, pointing them to what he's going to leave with them. And that is the gift of the Spirit. And of course, that comes uh, in the book of Acts with, the, with Pentecost. Um, and the Spirit has a certain character. And so I'd encourage you as you read through um, this, this chapter, it's one of the... the um, more beautiful chapters on the, the person and work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, uh, the, the gift that God has given to us, to all who are, who are believers uh, in Jesus. So um, I think I preached on two of these texts when we were last year, when we were going through uh, the, um, the series on what did Jesus really teach? Uh, and I know I taught on John 14, 6. Actually, I may have preached in, from this text three or four times. And I know I preached on the whole, the, whole, the Holy Spirit, uh, what Jesus believed about the, or taught about the Holy Spirit. Uh, so you can go back. I think we still have those online if you want to go back and check those out. And then finally, we have Ephesians chapter four. So <clears throat> it's a pretty significant um, shift in Ephesians, chapters one through three, dealing much more about who we are in Christ, particularly talking about things like, for instance, the Gentiles have been included in this reconciliation with God. Those who were once far off have now been brought near. Um, and we are all children of wrath. We are all uh, dead in our trespasses and sins. And we have all through faith in Christ, uh, because of God's grace, have been brought near to him and have been reconciled to him, have been uh, given new life in Christ. And all these great things about who we are in Christ and what our salvation is like, uh, in chapter four, Paul shifts and he starts to give us the therefore. Uh, how shall we then live because of this? And there's much more than we can talk about here. Uh, but let me just read to you this first passage because uh, Paul says, Therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, I urge you uh, to walk in a manner worthy of your calling, which you've been called, with all humility, gentleness, patience, uh, bearing with one another in love. Uh, so notice all the one another's, notice that the unity that's being stressed here, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. And where does that unity come from? It comes from the fact that we, there's one body, one spirit, just as you were called with the one hope that belongs to your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father over all, who is over all, of all, who is over all, through all and in all. So our unity is based on all of these things, the unified experience, the unified God, uh, the unified church, 
And uh, and whether you're Jew, Gentile, uh, whether you are uh, slave or free, doesn't matter what you are, who you are, there's something that unifies all of us, Paul says, and that is our uh, our faith in the one Lord, Jesus Christ, um, and the one baptism uh, that has uh, that has been given to us, uh, the salvation and the spirit. So uh, there's some other exhortations that Paul, that Paul has through here. Uh, it's the always the imperative and the indicative. So who we are in Christ, the indicative, the, the statement of, of who we are uh, gives rise to the imperative of how we should live our lives uh, and the commands that Paul gives us here. So I'm not going to comment on all those. Uh, there's some great stuff here, but I'll let you do that on your own. Uh, so hope you have a great rest of the day and let us live out our unity and our, and our love for, for Christ uh, in our lives together on this day, March 24th, 2024.